Scratch Fever Chapter Notes See the end of the chapter for notes It all happened so fast that Marinette had no time to react. Marinette skipped forward as Chloe stepped out of the elevator. Chloe, reading an article on the best bed and breakfasts in Nice, didn't see the pink and white polka dotted mass hurtling towards her until it was too late. She glanced up, barely registering her impending doom as Marinette crashed into her with a pain doom that sent both women tumbling to the floor of the elevator while the other passenger skidded out of the way of the two woman wrecking machine. And just like that, Marinette's days without a catastrophe of clumsiness clock was reset to zero. Ow, what the hell? The oddly familiar voice under Marinette whined. Sorry 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 sorry. Marinette chanted, flailing around and grabbing an offered hand and stumbling to her feet. Are you okay? The second passenger asked as Adrian ran forward to help the other woman up. Fine, I'm fine, Marinette said, brushing her suddenly messy hair out of her eyes. I'm just seriously, you could have gotten me killed. The woman huffed brushing a strand of blonde hair out of her eye as Adrian hoisted her to her feet. Honestly, what were you thinking just barreling into an elevator like some kind of marinette stiffened as the woman stood up fully, stomach slowly sinking as she recognized the blonde currently clutching Adrian's arm for support. Two pairs of blue eyes that hadn't met for years suddenly locked, identical looks of shock and wary confusion staring back at each other. It was, without a doubt, Chloe Bourgeois, the leggy blonde nightmare that had haunted Marinette's childhood and teenage years was two feet in front of her, Dot and now knew more about Marinette's personal life than Marinette was comfortable with. Then again, Marinette now knew more than she wanted to about Chloe as well. Marinette. Both Chloe and the other passenger in the elevator car said almost simultaneously. Marinette's attention strayed from Chloe's arm on Adrian's for a brief moment to regard the man that pulled her up. Curious teal eyes looked down at her from a height that rivaled Adrian's. Slender fingers tucked a curtain of scarlet red hair behind an ear stamped with three silvery studs, exposing a black hexagonal tattoo on the nape of his neck peeking out of the collar of his t-shirt. He looked familiar, he clearly seemed to recognize her, but Marinette's brain still reeling from literally running into Chloe failed to put the face to the name until Adrian spoke behind her. You okay? Adrian asked, glancing between Chloe and the man currently helping her to her to her feet. You nath. No scratches here, the man laughed, dusting his shirt off. Marinette glanced back up at the man, squinting as though she tried to imagine him with a sweep of hair in front of his face instead of pulled up behind his ears. Realization slowly dawned on her, eyes widening and mouth falling open. N. Nathaniel. Marinette squeaked, scarcely believing the quiet artistic boy who nursed a crush on her for years had a grown-up to be a tomato-haired pretty boy and B. helped her to her feet in the elevator of an underground bondage emporium. So far this wasn't exactly how she envisioned her school reunion. Long time no see, Adrian laughed, crossing the elevator to where Nathaniel looked torn between being happy to see them and wanting to dissolve into the floor. I thought Max had you prisoner in the basement working on character designs. Sorry, work's been a pill and a half lately, Nathaniel said, scratching the back of his neck as he glanced between Marinette and Adrian with a small smile. Deadlines from the publisher and whatnot. Been meaning to get in touch but dot you know. Marinette had nearly forgotten how the pair of them struck up an odd friendship during their senior year, becoming nearly inseparable even as Adrian prepared to leave France. She and Nino found that their Adrian time was being cut into by impromptu sleepovers and anime marathons at Nathanel's house but surprisingly she had been the only one concerned. Nino didn't seem to be too worried that Nathaniel was usurping his best friend position but when pressed about it Nino either pretended not to hear her or changed the topic as fast as he could. But ah, good to see you. Nathaniel said with a small laugh. Marinette's eyes followed Nathaniel's gaze back to Chloe whose cheeks were quickly matching the color of Nathaniel's hair. If Adrian was being surprisingly blasé about running into two of his former friends in what could only be described as a cross between a sex dungeon and a supermarket, Chloe looked like being in their presence was slowly boiling her alive. But, uh, I is this not the rest of the bookstore? Chloe laughed, glancing around with a feigned look of confusion as she adjusted the sunglasses on her face and slowly scooted behind Nathaniel. I I I was looking for a book on a horticulture. Yes. I I wanted to start a spice garden and I think they know what we're here for, Nathaniel said, smirking as Chloe nearly choked on her bubble gum and violently drew her finger across her throat. What? I don't think we can play the we accidentally wandered in here card. Not anymore we can't. Chloe hissed, jabbing Nathaniel in the back of the arm. 
Marinette would have found the whole thing hilarious Chloe Bourgeois pretending like she had no idea how she ended up in a sex shop was the stuff great stand-up was made of if she wasn't still stunned into complete baffled silence by her presence. Marinette had never really liked Chloe when they were kids, almost hated her when they were teenagers. Part of her waited for the old embers of teenage rivalry to flare up now that they were in a confined space together, dot and she was stunned when they didn't. The exasperation and disgust that tinged Marinette's memories of the other woman failed to resurge which was almost as surprising as running headlong into Chloe in the first place. It was still early, though. This isn't the first time I've caught you two down here either, Adrian chuckled, winding his arm around Marinette's waist and jerking her out of her thoughts. Chloe lingered at Nathanel's elbow, shooting him an icy glare as he casually pretended not to notice she was upset with him. Chloe huffed, muttering something that sounded like, it's not you I'm worried about, as her eyes drifted between Adrian and Marinette. Curiosity appeared to overtake her initial surprise as she seemed to be piecing something together in her head. Wait a minute, Chloe said, lowering her glasses as Marinette shifted under her gaze. Are you? Excuse me. The quartet looked up, quickly scuttling out of the way of a man hauling a large cardboard box towards the elevator. They muttered their apologies, stepping out of the car and into the foyer as the elevator jerked and started its climb back up to street level. So much for slipping away, Marinette brooded, poignantly ignoring Chloe's glance as it finally rested on Adrian again. So, Chloe said after a moment, looking Marinette over through slightly narrowed eyes. Are you two here, together? Uh, Marinette coughed, glancing up at Adrian for a moment to find he had looked to her at the exact same moment. But uh, that's right, part of Marinette thought. Complicated, her more rational mind chimed in. None of your business. A childish and somewhat defensive Marinette chimed in from the back of her mind. It's okay, Adrian said, saving Marinette from having to answer a question she didn't rightly know the answer to. Chloe knows about um, Adrian gestured between the two of them, coughing and chuckling nervously. Wait, you told her about me. Marinette demanded, turning to fix Adrian with a curious glare. And not by name, Adrian said, holding his hands up. Jay just mentioned that I was a, uh, seeing someone, he mentioned a friend who he met online and was currently, involved with Chloe supplied, eyes roaming over the pair of them curiously as she leaned against Nathanel's side. Though he was insufferably vague about it, wouldn't cough up details no matter how hard I pressed him. Oh, Marinette said, not quite knowing whether to feel relieved, or disappointed that Adrian hadn't mentioned her to his friends. Well you know how he is, proper gentleman doesn't kiss and tell, does he? Chloe said, smirking at a sheepish-looking Adrian before turning to Marinette. I had no idea that you were his special friend until a few minutes ago. Marinette didn't know if her secret identity was a good thing or bad thing in this scenario. Keeping secrets, especially between family and close friends, wasn't the sign of a healthy relationship, though she had to remind herself that she wasn't technically in a relationship with Adrian. She didn't know what the protocol was for friends with benefits, she didn't know if she should be happy that Adrian prioritized her privacy, or upset that Adrian didn't feel like mentioning her by name. And she still didn't quite know how to feel about Chloe. Adrian didn't seem to have that problem, not shying away as Chloe briefly kissed him on the cheek. A small spike of possessive envy washed through her, compelling her to snugly secure her grip on Adrian's arm before realizing Chloe hadn't done to Adrian anything she didn't do to Aaliyah or Nino on a daily basis. Chloe retreated after Adrian returned the chaste peck, surprising Marinette at the amount of restraint showed. If Marinette was expecting gushing, squeeing, and cries of a drykens as Chloe smothered him in kisses she was disappointed. But then again, her experience with Chloe ended with graduation and there had been seven long years where she didn't really know the formerly clingy blonde or how she related to Adrian anymore. They hadn't been very close in school but school was school, dot and apparently they had more in common now than they did when they were teenagers. If Marinette was on edge, Adrian was as collected as if they had bumped into Chloe and Nathaniel at a supermarket. So how's the company? Adrian asked. Max is pulling his hair out trying to make sure we launch our new game on time but he always does that, Nathaniel said with a quiet laugh, scratching his neck. They've been working on some new browser game for a few months now, Chloe sighed, fishing her phone out of her pocket. They're making me test it in my downtime. And, Adrian asked. It's stupid, Chloe sniffed. So, incredibly stupid. And how many hours have you logged on it so far? Nathaniel asked, smile suggesting he already knew the answer. 
Chloe pinked, glancing away with a pout and mumbling something that sounded like 83 under her breath. It's stupid because it's sucking his personal life away, Chloe huffed. And by extension, mine as well since I can't very well go to the fucking movies by myself. Needless to say I'm taking a, forced day off, Nathaniel said, spinning a rack of magazines around idly. Oh you poor baby, Chloe pouted, poking Nathaniel in the side of his cheek. I'm sure this is all so hard for you. I'm gonna bite you, Nathaniel said, snapping his teeth at Chloe's finger. Promises, Chloe said, waggling her finger. How's the unemployed life treating you? Nathaniel said, leaning on a bookshelf casually next to Chloe. What have you been doing? Oh just stuff, Adrian said with a small wave of his hand. Clearly, Chloe snorted, eyes lingering on the bags in Adrian's hands. I heard about that stuff, Nathaniel said with a small smirk. Chloe literally hit the roof when you told her you ditched Marcel. Can you blame me? Chloe sniffed, eyes flickering towards Marinette. Seriously, you have no idea how much I nagged him to just ditch Gabriel and go live in the Cayman Islands like a proper rich layabout. God knows you had every reason to. I got there eventually, Adrian said with a sheepish smile, glancing at Marinette. I just needed some, help figuring it out. Help, Nathaniel said, following Adrian's gaze with a raised brow. Marinette glanced at Adrian with a small chuckle, warming a little at his insinuation. Chloe's lips pursed, raising a brow at Adrian as he shot her an almost apologetic look. S so what are you two in for? Marinette said quickly. Fittings, Nathaniel said, a smug foxish smile creeping onto his face as Chloe suppressed a small grimace. Taylor here pinged us this morning, apparently the outfits we ordered are ready for, final adjustments, do I want to know? Marinette asked, angling the question more towards Nathaniel. No. Chloe butted in quickly, coughing and glancing away as Marinette's gaze turned to her. I I mean, they're just a, uh, outfits. And nothing exciting. I disagree, Nathaniel said with a small chuckle, shuffling through his phone as Chloe shot him a red-faced look of panic. I've got the composite sketches right here if you'd like to take a look at THI I'm sure Marinette sees enough designs during her day job. Chloe squeaked, reaching for the phone as Nathaniel dangled it just out of her grasp. She's just terrified because she didn't get to see the designs before they were sent to the tailor, Nathaniel said, nodding behind the counter to a pair of velvet curtains. They have a designer here. Marinette asked, suddenly interested. Designer is a strong word, Nathaniel said, ignoring Chloe's grabby hands. Their tailor can work wonders if you give them something to work with though, they're good at working from a print. Let me see. Chloe whined. No, Nathaniel said, stowing his phone in his back pocket and leaning against the bookshelf so Chloe couldn't fish it out. A woman has a right to know what she's going to put on her body. And you will, Nathaniel said, ignoring the light jab Chloe aimed at his side. After I'm done with my fitting. Pain in the ass, Chloe huffed. Nathaniel just shrugged as if to say fair enough. Are you going back there now? Adrian asked, glancing at Marinette for a moment. Uh, I'd kind of like to see the kind of stuff they're capable of if that's okay. You mind if I head back there to check? The question was angled at both Marinette and Nathaniel who glanced at each other for a moment. I've dot got no problem with that, Nathaniel shrugged, glancing at Marinette. Unless you have somewhere to be. They did, technically, but Marinette was at least marginally curious as to what kind of setup they had behind the counter. Her curiosity wasn't entirely professional either, she had a number of ideas that she didn't know how to execute having never designed something exclusively for the bedroom before. She could stomach the impromptu mosh bit of awkwardness a little longer, for Adrian's enthusiastic sake as well as hers. We can pop in, Marinette said, lacing her arm through Adrian's with a small smile. No harm glancing around, right? Are you sure you don't have somewhere else to be? Chloe asked, shooting them an almost pleading look as they meandered towards the back room. Oh relax, no one's going to see you in your little outfit if you don't want them to, Nathaniel sighed, nodding to the clerk behind the counter who pulled the curtain back for the foursome. I should hope and wait how little is little. Chloe demanded, chasing after Nathaniel. I don't know, how little is your butt? Nathaniel snickered as Chloe paled. I forgot the measurements when I sent it in so it might be a little on the snug side you son of a-o oh, calm down, Nathaniel sighed. You don't even know what it is yet and you're already all bent out of shape. Given the last thing you designed for me, I think I have a right to be worried, Chloe mumbled. I thought you liked my Christmas gift, Nathaniel said with a sharp smile. 
especially the fluffy little Chloe aimed a kick at the back of Nathaniel's calf as he stepped through the doorway to keep him from saying anything else. Shish. Trust me, I don't want to know, Marinette said. It was strange, Nathaniel had always disliked Chloe in school but had been too timid to say anything to her. Now he seemed to enjoy ruffling her feathers, teasing her, getting a rise out of her however he could. Marinette didn't quite know what had prompted Nathaniel to get over his fear of pissing Chloe off but it was refreshing to see that bourgeois menace had worn off some, or at least that people no longer took it so seriously. Marinette followed the bickering pair through the archway into a separate room in the shop. The room they stood in appeared to be a cross between a large department store fitting room and a Halloween store. Racks of various vacuum-sealed clothes stretched from the door to the far wall, categorized in a number of different ways from scenarios such as school to categories such as edible. On the far wall, a shelf full of dangerous-looking shoes glinted under floodlights shining down from the ceiling and there was even a collection of various animal ears hanging off the side wall. Marinette made a mental note to look at those late. A young woman sat behind counter separating the main room from what appeared to be fitting rooms. She glanced up as they entered, earmarking her novel and looking as attentive as she could. Can I help you? The woman asked, glancing at Marinette who helpfully jabbed her finger in Nathaniel's direction. Last minute fitting and pick up, Nathaniel said quietly, fishing a card out of his jacket and sliding it across the counter. I dropped off the designs last month. Right. Two custom orders paid for by Mr. How? The woman asked, glancing up from the card. That's the one, Nathaniel said. Some bad news I'm afraid, the clerk said, filing the card away in the cash register. Our usual men's wear clerk had to go home. Not to get into anything personal but he had to deal with a sudden bad case of something that rhymes with steroids. Aren't you discreet? Chloe muttered, smiling tightly as the woman shot her a small scowl. Anyway, the clerk continued, turning back to Nathaniel. Like I was saying there's no one here to help you out in the dressing room and make sure all the accessories work like they're supposed to. Accessories? Chloe asked, raising her brow. What did you order? Adrian asked, glancing sideways at Nathaniel who just shrugged. It's complicated, Nathaniel said with a small pink-tinged smile. So we can't make sure everything works how it's supposed to, unless your friend here wants to help you with it, the clerk said, nodding at Adrian. Me, Adrian asked. Yeah, there's not much that needs doing, just a couple of straps to tighten and a few locks to check, the clerk said, glancing at the four of them expectantly. Otherwise we're kinda stuck for final fittings. So many heads turned it was hard to keep track. Nathaniel turned to Adrian, who turned to Marinette, who turned Nathaniel, who turned to Chloe who just shrugged as if to say not my body. Marinette caught Adrian's eye with a small shrug, she didn't exactly feel like lingering more than she had to but Nathaniel appeared to be in a bit of a bind or in a lack of one unless Adrian helped out. Whatever her feelings towards Chloe were, she wasn't about to let Nathaniel down because she would rather be at Adrian's place testing their new purchases. If you want, Marinette said non-committedly. I don't think it'll take long, Nathaniel said. It's that or me, the clerk said with a small laugh. Strictly speaking I'm not supposed to help with the fittings but... We got it, Chloe interrupted with a tight smile. Thanks though. As long as you're cool with it, Nathaniel said. I can come back when... No, it's fine. Adrian said, dropping their bags next to the counter. If I'm being honest I'd like to see what this place is capable of coming up with. Hey, we may not be the best designers but we can manhandle a piece of leather pretty well, the clerk laughed, nodding behind her where a black vinyl garment bag hung on a fitting room door. Or latex, or fake fur, or real gotcha, Chloe said, snapping her gum and weathering the small frown the clerk shot her with her usual blasé indifference. Just let me know when they're wrapping up, I need to mentally prepare myself for whatever fashion disaster Nathanel's prepared for me. Your support means the whole world to me, oh wind beneath my wings, Nathaniel said dry laugh, heading into the back room with Adrian on his heels. If you want you can wait for your boyfriends over there, the clerk said, returning to her book as she jerked her thumb at a padded bench outside the fitting room. He's not my, Marinette trailed off as she realized it didn't matter all that much what a complete stranger thought of her relationship with Adrian. Her hesitation didn't escape Chloe's notice, who glanced at her with a curious, dot and almost disappointed look. This perplexed Marinette enough to pluck her bags from beside the counter and make her way over to the padded bench plopping them down and sitting on the far end, hoping to avoid any kind of lengthy conversation with her former high school nemesis. But clearly Chloe had other ideas. 
Chloe pretended to idly wander down the rows of clothing as Adrian and Nathaniel sealed themselves in the dressing room, but it was clear her circular wanderings were anything but random. Marinette sat up straight as Chloe paused to glance at the racks of clothes in front of her, pretending to be extremely interested in the rippable nurse clothing for a moment before she spoke. So, Chloe said, not lifting her gaze from the rack. You're the, stuff Adrian has been doing for, what, a month now? Eight weeks, Marinette corrected, crossing her legs and picking at a loose thread in the bench. Officially, anyway. We've been, talking for a while. I know, Chloe said simply, glancing up and snorting at Marinette's look of surprise. What? Are you surprised Adrian tells me things? A little, Marinette muttered, meeting Chloe's curious gaze with a shrug. You two weren't exactly, chummy in school. Chloe simply shrugged at that. Fair point, haven't been in school for eight years almost but fair point. Chloe resumed pretending to browse the racks, leaving Marinette to shift a little on the suddenly uncomfortable bench. The fact that Adrian had confided in Chloe piqued her curiosity. The temptation to ask after him was intense, part of her wanted to know more about Adrian's perspective, but part of her wondered if she was letting her curiosity get the best of her. Then again, there was a famous saying about curiosity in cats. So, Marinette blurted out in spite of herself, fidgeting with her glasses as Chloe glanced back up at her. He's, mentioned me. Chloe squinted at Marinette for a moment before plucking a sexy pixie outfit from the racks and holding it up curiously. Not by name, like I said he can be very discreet when he wants to be. I'm sure, Marinette muttered, standing up and pretending to browse the other side of the rack Chloe was looking at. I mean like, in general, does he talk about, as for lack of a better word. Well, he did mention you bleat like a goat when you orgasm, Chloe said, tapping her chin as Marinette nearly fell into the rack, dislodging a few garments as she struggled to right herself. And that you fantasized about making love to his father. What? Marinette spluttered. Yeah, he also said you had a mole that looks like the topographical map of Spain on your oh my god I'm kidding, Chloe said, blanching at Marinette's horrified expression. Jesus, did you think I was serious? How was I supposed to know you weren't? Marinette demanded, straightening the clothes rack as the clerk glanced over at the pair of them with a frown. Sorry, Chloe said, holding her hands up. I was trying to make a joke, lighten the mood a little so we don't spend the next 20 minutes marinating in awkward boulevards. Your comedy routine needs work, Marinette grumbled. Fine, Chloe sighed sorry I joked that you sounded like a goat and had odd Spanish-shaped birthmarks on your body, dot end. And I'm sorry that I implied that your standards were low enough to fuck Adrian's undercooked baguette of a father, Chloe concluded, lips twitching into a small smile. Thank you, Marinette said, pouting down at a dress on the rack to avoid anything that could be mistaken for a smile. I don't even know why I said that, Chloe said, thumbing through the rack idly. I mean I know I've dabbled in bitchery in the past but suggesting you wanted to sleep with Lucius Malfoy's less stylish brother is a little low, even for me. Marinette bit her lip, disguising a snort of laughter in a cough buried in her arm as Chloe continued to peruse the racks, pretending to take no notice of Marinette's condition. I mean the fact that Madame Agreste had sex with Anna Wintour and Vladimir Putin's love child even once s stop. Marinette spluttered, clutching the rack with one hand and her ribs with the other, shaking silently as she tried to stifle her laughter so Adrian didn't hear her in the back. Please. See. My comedy routine works just fine, Chloe said, wrinkling her nose at a costume advertised as a sexy sans culotte dress as Marinette doubled over in the aisle over. You know, I don't think we would have bickered so much in school if I knew you hated Adrian's Weisswort daddy as much as I did. I didn't, Marinette giggled, wiping a tear from her eye as she slowly regained control of her breathing. I idolized him, until I met Adrian and found out my designer idol wasn't exactly all that admirable, yes, dot the sheen of Gabriel Agreste wore off the first time you spent 20 seconds with him, Chloe said, glancing over the racks at Marinette. Of course Adrian won't hear a word against him still but he's Adrian. Exactly, Chloe sighed, rolling her eyes. Soft as cheese but I suppose that's why I love him, love. Marinette paused, shooting Chloe a small frown. Chloe returned Marinette's frown with a dreamy sigh. Yes, I'm like totally in love with Adrian after all these years and I'm just praying that you screw things up with him so I can finally make him mine tilde because that's like the only kind of love that exists in the world. Chloe's airy expression quickly turned deadpan as Marinette's cheeks reddened a little in embarrassment. Sorry. Don't worry, Balenciaga, I'm not after your boyfriend, Chloe said, coming to the wall of shoes and eyeing a black and yellow set of spiky heels thoughtfully.
I can see that, Marinette replied, picking up a pair of black and red polka dotted heels thoughtfully. But he's not, I mean, we're not, I mean we're, like, exclusive and all but we're not, Marinette trailed off, bumping the two heels together before replacing them on the rack. I figured, Chloe sighed, checking the price tag on the heels she was looking at and glancing at Marinette out of the corner of her eye. Is there a reason why? I, have my reasons, Marinette said, folding her arms across her chest. Good reasons are just, reasons. Chloe said, looking Marinette up and down. Marinette didn't even know the answer to that question or even where to begin. She could have begun with fact that she was currently held hostage by a creepy, talentless CEO because Adrian wasn't playing nicely. She could have also led with the fact that it had been five years since she had been anyone's girlfriend and, for lack of practice, had almost completely forgotten how. Then there was the fact that she relished the opportunity to flirt and have fun, kinky sex with one of her best friends with no strings attached, no pressures added, and no worries that she might not be good enough for him. She had a lot of good reasons for not making things official between her and Adrian, dot, but she didn't think any of them would weather Chloe's scrutiny. Good reasons, Marinette reiterated. If you say so, Chloe sighed. Meaning. Marinette pressed. Chloe glared at the wall of shoes for a moment, tilting her head as though she was trying to find the right way to phrase her thoughts. Look, just between me, you, and the 8-inch spiked combat boots here, you're not the first good friend, Adrian has had, Chloe said, turning to square eye to eye with Marinette. You know this, right? I figured, Marinette shrugged. Adrian had never been vocal about his past flings, but then again Marinette hadn't spilled her guts about her previous boyfriend's girlfriend, and flings in New York. I also figured it didn't matter that much. In a perfect world, it wouldn't, Chloe shrugged. But, look, this doesn't get back to Adrian, okay. Oh, dot K. Marinette said a little warily. I've known Adrian a long time, Chloe said, gazing over Marinette's shoulder. We've shared all the ups and downs of our shitty little rich kid lives since we were five, okay. He's basically my younger brother, if only by two months. So I'm a little, cagey when it comes to his partners. If Marinette had thought she was going to get the shovel talk from Chloe Bourgeois on her day off, she might have worn something a little more intimidating, or at least less frilly. It was hard to look resolute dressed in a bubblegum pink sundress but Marinette didn't waver under Chloe's gaze. All I'm saying, Chloe said, holding her hands up is that he hasn't had the best friends with benefits track record, exclusive or otherwise. Adrian attracts shallow, superficial kinky little hipster pricks that want to fuck a supermodel in the ass and then catch a flight to New York the next day. They're a dime a dozen and once the dust settles, Adrian is the one who ends up calling me at four in the morning blubbering about how the latest human disaster to waste his time broke his heart. Dot. Trust me, I've seen it a million times. And you think I'm one of them. Marinette asked, face flushing at the suggestion that she would use Adrian so callously. You're putting words in my mouth, Chloe said, waggling a finger in Marinette's direction. That's not what I'm saying. What are you saying? Marinette asked, folding her arms. Chloe snapped her gum thoughtfully, blowing a large pink bubble and popping it before continuing. I'm saying that Adrian has had a lot of benefits but not a lot of friends, if you catch my meaning. Blind, armless two-year-olds could have caught Chloe's meaning. Marinette wasn't privy to Adrian's history of lovers and truth be told she never wanted to be. She didn't need to know who Adrian had been with before, and from how Chloe described his past partners, they weren't worth knowing anyway. He never mentioned that, Marinette muttered. He wouldn't, Chloe said. Not like it matters anymore anyway. Past is in the past and all that, just, Marinette silently watched Chloe fidget, heels tapping on the hardwood floor as she seemed to be searching the shop for the right thing to say. Bullshit Gabriel fucking jokes aside, he does talk about you. I don't know what you two are doing and, frankly, I don't care, but, he's happy. Really happy. Maybe that's just what happens when you stop working for a soul-sucking potato goblin like Marcel Dubois, maybe it's because of you or, fuck what am I trying to say. Chloe trailed off with a frustrated sigh, twirling a blonde curl as she stared into the mirror behind Marinette's head. People have been using Adrian since he was nine years old. His useless daddy used him as a living mannequin, a laundry list of selfish douchebags and bitches have used him to get their rocks off, and Marcel, prince of the toad people, used him to keep control of Gabriel's company. You can probably count the number of people who care about Adrian as a fucking human being on one hand, Chloe said, starting to tick off fingers. S. Yours truly, Nino, Nathaniel, Anne.
Chloe's left index finger lingered on her right hand's ring finger as she looked Marinette up and down. Marinette was silent for a moment, quietly digesting everything Chloe had said to her. It wasn't often that she thought of Adrian's home life as a child, he was always so positive and supportive of others that the fact that he was essentially orphaned when his mother passed didn't cross her mind. Her stomach clenched, partly in aching sympathy for Adrian and partly in bitter, vitriolic resentment for anyone and everyone that made him feel used, for his useless father, for his dick of a boss, for the faceless, nameless, selfish pricks that had preceded her in Adrian's bed. She wished she could scrub the last seven years away, go back in time to when teenage Marinette was too afraid to tell Adrian how she felt and smack some sense into her. They could have had years together instead of Adrian slumming it with a parade of losers. The thought alone made Marinette's throat tighten, and she bit her lip to prevent her anger from spilling out. So I need to know if you're just in this for cheap giggles or if you really care about him, romantically or otherwise, Chloe concluded, lowering her sunglasses to fix Marinette with a steady, curious expression. I don't, Marinette said, voice coming out a little hoarse as she swallowed heavily. I don't just care about the sex, he was my friend first. He's still my friend first. And if I had to pick, Marinette cleared her throat matching Chloe's intense stare. If I have to pick between being his friend and his friend with benefits, well, I can live without the benefits. Chloe's eyes scraped over Marinette's expression, scouring it for insincerity for a long moment before nodding thoughtfully. For Adrian's sake, I hope you're telling the truth, Chloe said, exhaling through her mouth and looking annoyed that things had gotten so sentimental. God knows his bar for affection is low enough for you to skip rope over, I think by just talking to him daily you're already doing better than Gabriel ever did. I'll try not to trip, Marinette chuckled, wiping her eyes under her glasses. Though I may trip over your opinion of Adrian's father, it's certainly low enough. I think I've earned the right to despise a man who managed to combine the worst of absent and overbearing parenting into one bony package, Chloe sniffed, fixing her hair as she caught sight of her reflection in the mirror behind Marinette. Well, we have that in common at least, Marinette snorted. Not the only thing, apparently, I don't need to remind you that you never saw me here, right? Chloe, lowering her sunglasses and fixing Marinette with a significant stare. Because if you, like, tell anyone I'll have to kill you or whatever. Marinette drew her fingers across her lips with a nod. I won't tell a soul, as long as you don't either. Oh please, I know how this Omerta thingy works, Chloe sniffed, plucking a pink pixie costume from the rack and tilting her head thoughtfully. This isn't my first rodeo at the kink shop, you know. It's mine so, thought I'd ask, Marinette shrugged, flickering through the clothes racks with Chloe something she never imagined she'd be doing as a teenager. Well you handle it better than Jingerlocks did on his first time here, Chloe snorted, folding the pixie costume over her arm. He actually wore a full hoodie like the pretentious art school hipster trash he is, if you can believe it. I can't, Marinette said, shooting Chloe a furtive glacé. So, dot you and Nathaniel. Pardon, Chloe asked. How did the pair of you end up here? Marinette asked, lips curling in a smirk. Chloe scratched the back of her neck, lips betraying a small smile. That's, kind of a long. Finished, Adrian called, stepping out of the fitting rooms followed by Nathaniel. Unfortunately, Marinette's line of questioning was cut off prematurely as Chloe reluctantly turned and meandered her way over towards a satisfied-looking Nathaniel. That was way too fast, Chloe grumbled, foisting the pixie costume into Nathaniel's arms. Adrian, knows his way around a set of leather straps, Nathaniel coughed, shooting Marinette a small wink that caused her to flush to her roots at the insinuation. Wasn't that hard to work out, Adrian shrugged, bumping Nathaniel's shoulder lightly. I don't know if I should be more impressed with their leatherwork, or Nath's design skills. Really, Marinette said, sliding up next to Adrian, threading her arm through his. He looked mildly surprised that she had appeared at his elbow without prompt, leaning her head on his shoulder as Chloe fussed and fidgeted in front of her. Are there any surprise leather straps on mine? Chloe asked. No, Nathaniel said simply. All one piece, Adrian saw it hanging on the rack back there. Which one was that again? White one, Nathaniel said simply, smirking as Adrian's cheek flushed and Chloe's paled. Th the one with the, Adrian swallowed heavily, making an odd hand gesture. MMHMM, Nathaniel said, a small flash of white showing as he grinned at Chloe's suspicious glare. What dot did, dot you, do? Chloe hissed, turning her glare to Adrian. What did he do? Good to see you guys. Adrian said suddenly, snatching their bags up as the clerk waved Chloe into the back. 
W we'll catch up sometime, yeah. Let's do lunch at Chloe's hotel one of these days, Nathaniel said, smiling softly at the pair of them. I'll try and drag Max along, God knows he needs the break too. Sounds like a plan, Adrian said, hooking Marinette around the arm and lightly tugging her towards the door. Gee good to see you too Chloe. Wait, what do you know that I don't? Chloe demanded, looking between Adrian and Nathaniel suspiciously. You'll see Tilda Nathaniel sing-songed, waving them off as Adrian pulled her through the door. Marinette's eyes caught Chloe's for a brief second as they left and the pair of them exchanged a small nod before Chloe disappeared into the back. Marinette didn't know if she was ever going to be besties with Chloe all signs pointed to no but at least now she didn't doubt the blonde's intentions. The more people who cared about Adrian, the better, and even though she didn't really grasp the depth of Adrian and Chloe's relationship, she was happy, at least, that she was there for him. What's the rush? Marinette giggled, hanging on to Adrian as he led her towards the elevator at a brisk walk. I saw what Nathaniel designed for her, Adrian said gravely, reaching the elevator and mashing the up button as hard as he could. We have like, 10 seconds to get out of here before what in the hell is this supposed to be? Too late, Adrian said gravely, throwing himself in front of Marinette's body as the elevator hit the ground floor. Go, I'll try and hold her off. What was that? Marinette snorted, the sound of high-pitched shrieking coming from the back room as she looped her finger through Adrian's belt loop and tugged him back into the elevator. At the risk of giving too much away, it was tight, white, and had a fluffy tail sewn onto the back, Adrian said, suppressing a small shudder. If we don't get out of here, she's going to kill him and come after me. Adrian's fearful babbling was cut short by the sudden pressure of Marinette's lips against his. He let out a small gasp as her fingers wound around his neck and she arched up into him with a sweetly searing kiss that left his lips tingling and tasting of peach as she pulled back. Next, Adrian finished, blushing as Marinette laughed at the dumbstruck expression. Buh. Next, Adrian finished, blushing as Marinette laughed at the dumbstruck expression. Buh, that was, that was nice, thank you, Marinette said sweetly, looking up at him with a thoughtful expression. I mean, thank you for taking me along today. D don't mention it, Adrian said, warming as Marinette's arms threaded around his waist and her cheek pressed against his chest. I mean it, Marinette mumbled softly into his shirt. I had fun doing this, Dot and I'm glad you included me in this whole process. I I think we'll have more fun once we get these home, Adrian chuckled, holding up the bags as Marinette took them from him, holding them behind her back as the elevator reached the ground floor. Well, I have a lot of fun just hanging out with you, Marinette said, stepping out of the elevator and flashing him a small smile. No matter what we do. It took Adrian a full three seconds to move, Marinette's words still warming him like a shot of hot cider. She paused as she stepped into the bookshop proper, turning around with a curious smile that made his heart thud so achingly heavy in his chest. Coming. Marinette laughed, watching Adrian slowly step out of the elevator, wandering back towards her as though in a daze. She turned to head towards the front of the store, stopping as she felt a gentle touch on her upper arm that made her turn to face his soft, hungry expression. Your, a, uh, dot lip gloss tastes good, Adrian said in a soft voice as she almost instinctively took a step closer to him. Thank you, Marinette said, heart thundering in her ears as she ran her tongue over her lips. Kissing him in public was flirting with the boundaries they had established for themselves the morning after their first night together. They were going to be private, discreet. Their affair wasn't something they were going to parade around town but, where was the harm in just kissing? It was purely physical when they were naked and alone together, why should it be different in public? But Adrian wouldn't cross that boundary, unless she invited him across. Do you, want another taste? Marinette asked, biting her lip as she dropped the bags at her feet, back resting against a nearby bookshelf. The store was surprisingly empty for a Saturday, no one was going to walk in on them in the back by the Mandarin cookbooks. You sure you don't want to wait until we're home alone? Adrian asked, more for her sake than because of any reluctance on his part. She could tell he was restraining himself, waiting for her permission to move any closer. No one will know, Marinette muttered, fingers gripping the folds of his collar and tugging him closer. It'll be our, little, secret. Her lips brushed his briefly before pulling back, urging him on with a half-lidded look. Adrian wasted no time pressing his lips against her firmly, but lacking the carnal intensity of their first kisses. They weren't building to anything, this wasn't going to end with Marinette stripped to the waist and pressed against the bookshelves while Adrian ripped her panties off with his teeth. 
As much as she might enjoy that, she enjoyed the simple act of making out almost as much. Every soft, sensual kiss made her feel wanted, made her crave him even more. Her hands slid down to settle on his shoulders as he rested his on the bookcase behind her. Every now and then, one of them let out a breathy giggle that the other quickly smothered with a soft peck. They felt like teenagers making out in the school library, the thrill of the semi-forbidden urging them onwards. So, Marinette whispered, breaking off from the trail of kisses briefly. What do you want to do with me when we get home? At this rate, I don't think we're going anywhere, Adrian laughed, hands winding around her waist as hers tugged his hips closer by the belt loops on his jeans. Come on, Dot, you have to have something devious in mind, Marinette murmured, lightly nipping his lower lip and feigning innocence as his eyes snapped open. Sir, Adrian's hand trailed up her back, cupping the back of her neck as he pulled back to look at her properly. Flushed pink as her dress, he wondered if he would want her more and more the more they spent time together. I've got more than a few devious schemes, Adrian said, eyes trailing down to her neck. I can't think of them right now because all I really want to do, Adrian trailed off, leaning forward and pressing a soft kiss against Marinette's exposed neck. He felt her tense, hands gripping his shirt as he began to gently suck at the freckled patch of skin until it was as warm and pink as her cheeks. All I really want to do is get you out of this dress and whatever you have on underneath, Adrian whispered, nipping her neck softly and reveling in the small gasp he drew out of her. By my reckoning you have about 30 hours until your work week starts again, Dot and I want you to spend every, single, Dot one of those hours naked and clawing at my headboard. Marinette let out a small giggle, stomach fluttering at the image Adrian painted. Sounds like a hell of a way to spend a Saturday and Sunday, Adrian reminded her, arching his head up to look her in the eye. Maybe Monday too. I have work on Monday, Marinette reminded him almost reluctantly. Just tell your office you've been kidnapped by a rich lecherous lay about and are being held prisoner to his insatiable desire, Adrian said, waggling his eyebrows. I think they'll let you have the day off. They'll call Aaliyah too, Marinette giggled. And something tells me our weekend of fun doesn't include Aaliyah breaking down your door with a lighter and a can of hairspray. Not my idea of heat play, no, Adrian sighed, looking down at her thoughtfully. I guess that just means I need to get you home and get you naked so I can enjoy what little time we have together. Excellent idea, Marinette murmured, reaching up to kiss him one last time before oh excuse me, a voice came from behind them. I didn't see you th. Marinette. Before she died and combusted into a million pieces. Adrian tensed as a familiar voice called Marinette's name, eyes flying open and cheeks going pale. Part of Marinette prayed that she had misheard her name being called but, of course, she hadn't. She had heard that voice call her name for most of her life, for dinner, for chores, to help bring in the groceries. Instantly her arousal evaporated, replaced by a cold, slimy feeling of dread as she peeked around Adrian's shoulders, smiling sheepishly at the confused woman blinking olishly at them just a few yards away. H. Hi mom, Marinette squeaked. Chapter end notes and this is where things get complicated. Drama certainly happened but I wager it wasn't the kind most people were expecting. Big thanks to my beta reader for catching me before we went total teen drama 2K16. Honestly the path open to us now is so much better so big thanks to Pardonmo for setting me straight. At this point we're approaching what could be considered the halfway mark of this story. Not a hell of a lot of smut so far but I plan on remedying that in the future. I've got some, ideas for stuff canon, non-canon, and definitely non-canon but I'm a bloody stickler for having my porn serve a purpose in the story. So I'm compromising by compiling one-shots of cut material and stuff that I want to write but doesn't fit within the FIC at large. None of the one-shots are necessary to understand, enjoy the story so don't worry about following up with my latest sinning. I'll link the first chapter on my writing blog scribblings.tumblr.com slash secretfandomsmutblog.tumblr.com for those interested. Next chapter Marinette dies of shame, come back to life, and further tangles her relationship with Adrian. Aaliyah and Nina wonder if they're ever going to get a moment's peace with their best friends ruining their lives every three seconds, and there may, may not be muffins at the end for all.